Welcome to Sports Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Eastern Michigan apologizes to South Alabama for players' punch that sparked brawl after bowl game. Lions hang on to beat Vikings 30-24 for first division title since 1993. Ratcliffe wants struggling Man United back at the top of English and European soccer. Sailing milestone, a half-century of starts for a competitor in the Sydney to Hobart yacht race. Dolphins nip Cowboys 22-20 on Jason Sanders' last-second field goal, secure playoff spot. Eastern Michigan apologizes to South Alabama for players' punch that sparked brawl after bowl game. Associated Press. Eastern Michigan University's athletic director, Scott Weatherby, issued an apology to South Alabama after an Eastern Michigan player punched an opposing player in the head during a post-game brawl. The altercation occurred after South Alabama's victory over Eastern Michigan in the 68 Ventures Bowl. Weatherby condemned the actions of the student-athletes involved, stating that such behavior is unacceptable. He apologized to the EMU community, South Alabama, and its fans. Both universities are working with their respective athletic directors and conferences to investigate the incident and take appropriate actions. Lions hang on to beat Vikings 30-24 for first division title since 1993. Associated Press. The Detroit Lions have secured their first division title in 30 years after defeating the Minnesota Vikings 30-24 on Sunday. The Lions, led by quarterback Jared Goff and running back Jomer Gibbs, were able to overcome the injury-ravaged Vikings to secure the victory. The win guarantees the Lions a home playoff game for the first time in 22 seasons at Ford Field. The Lions' last division title win was in 1993 when they won the NFC Central. Ratcliffe wants struggling Man United back at the top of English and European soccer. Associated Press. British billionaire Jim Ratcliffe has acquired a stake of up to 25% in Manchester United after a deal was confirmed following negotiations with the Glazer family, the club's American owners. Ratcliffe, the owner of INEOS, is a lifelong United fan and expressed his ambition to see the club return to its position at the top of English, European, and world football. Although Ratcliffe initially sought to purchase the Glazers' controlling stake, he eventually agreed to become a minority shareholder. His acquisition comes after he made a late bid for Premier League club Chelsea in 2022. Sailing milestone, a half-century of starts for a competitor in the Sydney to Hobart yacht race. Associated Press. Lindsay May is set to become the first sailor to take part in the Sydney to Hobart yacht race for the 50th consecutive year. The 62-year-old, who has won the race three times, will compete on board antipodes in the race, which is expected to feature 103 boats. The 628 nautical mile, 720 mile, 1170 kilometer race starts in Sydney Harbour and finishes in Tasmania. Dolphins nip Cowboys 22-20 on Jason Sanders' last second field goal, secure playoff spot. Associated Press. The Miami Dolphins secured a playoff berth with a 22-20 victory over the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday. Jason Sanders kicked his fifth field goal of the game, a 29-yarder as time expired. Tua Tagovailoa threw for 293 yards and a touchdown for the Dolphins. Dak Prescott went 20 of 32 for 253 yards and two touchdowns for the Cowboys. Mayfield throws for 283 yards, two TDs as surging Bucks beat reeling Jaguars 30-12 for fourth straight win. Associated Press. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers defeated the Jacksonville Jaguars 30-12 on Sunday, securing their fourth consecutive victory. Baker Mayfield threw for 283 yards and two touchdowns for the Buccaneers, while Trevor Lawrence struggled to find a rhythm for the Jaguars after spending a week in the NFL's concussion protocol. Lawrence threw a second-half touchdown pass to Calvin Ridley before sitting out the fourth quarter with a shoulder injury. The win leaves the Buccaneers alone atop the NFC South with two weeks left in the regular season. The Jaguars, despite losing four straight, remain tied for first place in the AFC South. Vikings miss Cousins more than ever after Mullins' four interceptions and loss to Lions. Associated Press. The Minnesota Vikings are currently struggling without their star quarterback, Kirk Cousins, who suffered a season-ending Achilles tendon tear in October. The Vikings have used four different starting quarterbacks this season and are currently out of playoff contention in the NFC. Nick Mullins, who has taken over as the primary backup, threw for 411 yards and two touchdowns but also had four interceptions in the team's recent loss to the Detroit Lions. The Vikings have lost four out of their last five games and are lacking rhythm in the passing game without Cousins. Jets' brain trust deserves chance to see this through in 2024. Yahoo! The New York Jets owners, the Johnson brothers, have confirmed that coach Robert Sala, J. 
General Manager Joe Douglas and Offensive Coordinator Nathaniel Hackett will all return in 2024. The Jets have struggled this season, with their offense in particular failing to produce the results expected of it, and the team has missed the playoffs for 13 straight seasons. However, the Johnsons believe that the team's lackluster performances can be put down to the injury of quarterback Aaron Rodgers and will not consider a full rebuild until he is fully fit. The Jets have not made the playoffs for 13 years. NBA MVP Joel Embiid won't play in 76 Airs Heat Christmas game because of ankle issue. Associated Press Philadelphia 76ers Joel Embiid will miss the team's Christmas night game against the Miami Heat due to a sprained right ankle. This will be the fourth game Embiid has missed this season. He has been on a hot streak in December, averaging 40.2 points and 12.6 rebounds per game. Embiid is currently leading the league in scoring, and he has recorded at least 30 points and 10 rebounds in his last 13 games. The Heat may also be without Jimmy Butler, who has missed their last two games with a calf strain. Patriots captain Matthew Slater's long games played streak has ended. Yahoo! New England Patriots captain Matthew Slater will not be playing in the team's Week 16 game against the Denver Broncos, marking the first game he has missed since 2017 and ending his streak of 100 consecutive games played. Slater, a special teams ace, suffered a hamstring injury in the team's previous game against the Kansas City Chiefs. The loss of Slater is significant for the Patriots as they face Broncos wide receiver Marvin Mims, one of the league's top kick returners. The Patriots have also been dealing with other injuries, as running back Ramondra Stevenson and tight end Hunter Henry will also be inactive for the game. Dolphins clinch playoff berth with 22-20 win over Cowboys. Yahoo! The Miami Dolphins secured a 22-20 win over the Dallas Cowboys with a 29-yard field goal from Jason Sanders on the final play of the game. The victory secured a playoff berth for the Dolphins, who improved to 11-4. The loss did not impact the Cowboys' division hopes, as they fell to 10-5. They will only clinch the NFC East if they win their final two games and the Philadelphia Eagles lose once. Sanders kicked a total of five field goals in the game, including a 57-yarder, a 52-yarder, a 54-yarder, and a 35-yarder. The Dolphins' only touchdown came on a four-yard pass from Tua Tagovailoa to Raheem Mustert. Bears turn in another solid performance with win over Cardinals. Yahoo! The Chicago Bears have ended the 2023 season on a positive note, defeating the Arizona Cardinals 27-16. The win brings their record to 6-9, a respectable achievement considering they started the season with four consecutive losses. The Bears have won four of their last six games, showing signs of improvement and suggesting they are building towards a successful 2024 season. The Bears' running game was particularly impressive in this game, with Khalil Herbert rushing for 112 yards and Justin Fields just shy of 100 rushing yards. Fields' passing performance was not exceptional, leading to questions about his future as the Bears' quarterback, but he is making a case for himself as the franchise quarterback. The Cardinals, on the other hand, drop to a disappointing 3-12 record for the season and face a rebuilding project in the upcoming year. Despite still being in the rebuilding process themselves, the Bears' late-season improvement offers hope to their fans that they are progressing towards becoming contenders once again. Buccaneers move closer to NFC South crown with 30-12 route of Jaguars. Yahoo! The Tampa Bay Buccaneers secured a 30-12 home win against the Jacksonville Jaguars to move to 8-7. They will win their division for the third straight year if they win one of their next two games. Mike Evans caught two touchdowns in the first half, while the Buccaneers' defense forced four turnovers. Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence threw two interceptions and lost a fumble before leaving the game with a shoulder injury. The Jaguars have now lost four straight games. Jaguars blown out by Buccaneers, capping bad day for AFC South's first-place teams. Yahoo! The Indianapolis Colts and Houston Texans had winnable games on Sunday. Both lost. That should have been exciting, energizing news to the Jacksonville Jaguars, who played in the late game on Sunday. Houston's offense sputters with C.J. Stroud out in 36-22 loss to Browns. Associated Press. Case Keenum and the Houston Texans offense struggled in their second game without C.J. Stroud, who is out with a concussion. Keenum threw for just 62 yards and two interceptions before being replaced by Davis Mills in the 36-22 loss to the Cleveland Browns. The Texans didn't score on offense until the fourth quarter and struggled with penalties and negative plays. The loss decreases Houston's chances of making the playoffs. The Texans still have a chance, but Keenum acknowledged that they need to pick themselves up and dust themselves off. Well, 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 my dear viewers, what a whirlwind of sports news we have today.
From college football brawls to playoff clinches, there's no shortage of excitement. But before we dive into the analysis, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Six, your witty and observant host from the Six Degrees world. Now, let's get to it. First up, we have the Eastern Michigan University athletic director issuing an apology for a player's punch that sparked a brawl after a bowl game. Now, as much as we love a good old-fashioned sports rivalry, throwing punches is never the way to go. I mean, come on, guys, let's save the punches for the ring, not the football field. Moving on, we have the Detroit Lions winning their first division title in 30 years. That's right, folks, the Lions are roaring back to life. It's been a long time coming for the Lions, but they've finally clinched a playoff spot and a home game at Ford Field. You know what they say, good things come to those who wait, and wait, and wait. But it's not just football making waves today. British billionaire Jim Ratcliffe has acquired a stake in Manchester United, expressing his ambition to see the club return to its former glory. Now, I'm not a fortune teller, but with Ratcliffe's deep pockets and passion for the sport, we might just see the Red Devils rise back to the top of English and European soccer. And who knows, maybe he can even sprinkle some magic on my beloved Arsenal while he's at it. Now, let's talk about sailing. We have Lindsay May, a seasoned sailor, set to become the first person to participate in the Sydney to Hobart yacht race for the 50th consecutive year. Talk about commitment, dedication, and a whole lot of love for the sea. May is truly a legend in the sailing world, and I can only imagine the stories and wisdom he's accumulated over the years. Sail on, Lindsay, sail on. Switching gears to American football, we have the Miami Dolphins clinching a playoff spot with a last-second field goal. Now, that's what I call a nail-biter. The Dolphins secured their spot in the postseason with a 22-20 victory over the Dallas Cowboys. It's been quite a journey for the Dolphins, and I'm sure their fans are feeling as giddy as a dolphin doing flips in the ocean right about now. And speaking of flips, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are on fire with their fourth straight win. Baker Mayfield led the charge with 283 yards and two touchdowns, while Trevor Lawrence struggled for the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Buccaneers are now sitting pretty atop the NFC South, and it seems like they're sailing smoothly towards the playoffs. Keep those cannons firing, Bucks. Now, my dear viewers, I've given you a taste of the latest sports news, but I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on these stories? Are you surprised by the Lions division title win after all these years? Do you think Manchester United will reclaim its former glory under Jim Ratcliffe's ownership? And can the Dolphins make a splash in the playoffs? Share your thoughts, questions, and predictions with me. After all, in the Six Degrees world, sports fans are the real MVPs. That's all for today, folks. Stay tuned for more updates from the Six Degrees world, where sports are always a game changer. Until next time, this is Dr. Six signing off. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of Six Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the Six Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize Six Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, sixdobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive Six Do Brief by email.